This is David Astle on ABC Radio. In warmer months, I try and hop out on the bike and go for a little pedal before the day gets uh, too long in the tooth. But I have to admit, these days, it's more about a couple of stretch routines, maybe a bit of weights. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or if I should get out there in the cold. If so, how do I do it? If you've got questions about exercising in these colder months, a great opportunity for you to call in 1300 222 774 and you can text in as well on 0437 774 774. Plugger, my pleasure. Thanks for texting back. Uh, I'm now joined by uh, Chrisal Gunnar Wardner, who's an APA, that's the Australian Physiotherapy Association, titled Sports and Exercise Physiotherapist. Welcome, Chrisal. David, good evening. Um, so I'm using the cold as an excuse. Um, probably not a great thing. Um, what, what about with these colder months? Uh, is is it risky to to uh, exercise if it's really really cold? It's risky uh, only if you're not prepared, David. So mm -hmm. the the reason we don't tend to exercise in the cold is uh, acclimatization. You know, we've had uh, the warmer months, the summer months, and then things start getting cooler, and then all of a sudden, when it gets really cold, we don't uh, our bodies don't like it. And it's a connection between body and mind, and um, it can be a downward spiral. And, you know, you touched on a good point before. You said, oh, you know, you used to cycle or you were quite active and then you're not sure whether you're doing enough. It's a natural process that people actually slow down. And to make it worse, I've got to say, just on a separate matter, I, I think I tend to eat a little more just to keep warm. So it's a kind of, it's a double blow. But how does one acclimatise, you know, in, in the short term? It's one thing to to move to a new area and to get used to the cold. But um, is there are there ways that we can expedite or assist our bodies uh, to adjust to the to the shift? So creating a routine is probably the most powerful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have found that when people create a routine, they've written it down, uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, they, they're taking a, a very strong steps towards uh, exercising through the winter months or the cooler months. Something else that works uh, really well, David, yep. is so they've written down their plan, um, they've, uh, you know, they've got a plan or they've written it down, they've written down what type of activities they want to, go, want to do. And if they actually then share that with a like-minded person, so, you know, a friend, colleague that they want to exercise with, and then on a weekly basis, if they keep each other accountable, um, the success rate goes through the, uh, goes through the roof. So um, to give you, and the, the research was shown in this, where if someone has a goal, and they've just got it in their mind, um, the chance of uh, success is about 40% or just above 40%. But as soon as they've written it down, shared it with a friend and kept each other accountable week by week, it increases to over 70%. That is phenomenal. I, I, I also imagine that a lot of people have got their own exercise apps or watches uh, where there is this ongoing chronology of one's progress or one's continuity. I'd imagine that also, you know, builds into that accountability um, sort of uh, prompt. Oh, I'm a big fan of using uh, technology, David. We have these kinds of things. Uh, some of these things are built into our phones. So, you know, you can actually track your steps. You can track your heart rate. You can see what's happening uh, throughout the day. Uh, and also, you know, you're tracking sleep, which... Uh, uh, I'm very big on when it comes to the recovery after exercise. So if you have the technology, by all means, use it. Um, you know, you're trying to use some key metrics to see an improvement. Mm -hmm. But yes, definitely the technology. And, you know, even in the future, we'll have the opportunity to have things like virtual reality, augmented reality to combine that, uh, especially if you're exercising indoors. And, you know, you get that, you get that awareness and understanding of exercise uh, just through this uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. We've been talking about the temperature. We haven't been talking about the light. What um, what effect does the reduced amount of light have on exercise regime and also, too, our, our preparedness to exercise? Mm. The first thing that happens when we don't have enough light is uh, our mood. Our mood goes down, David. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's uh, things uh, like the 
the uh, feel-good hormones that we have naturally in our body, that goes down. And that's why it's actually important to, you know, keep things like vitamin D levels up because this is what we naturally get from uh, sunshine um, or sunlight. So in the winter months, uh, we don't have that. So that naturally when, uh, you know, the days are shorter, your mood is down, you don't... And when our mood is down, we don't feel like exercising as much. Although we know it's important, um, we're, we're starting uh, from a few steps back. And um, the other thing there is then in the cooler months, you actually have to prepare a lot more. Like your, uh, your body has to get warmed up uh, uh, and you have to prepare for that as well. Um, the, the reason for the warming up is quite important because there's the musculoskeletal system, you know, the muscles, the joints mm-hmm. and the ligaments, uh, the connective tissue, and in the cooler months, uh, we don't tend to move as much. So, you know, if you imagine someone going into the fetal position, because when we're cold, we are closer towards that yep. rather than, you know, in the summer months where we're nice and open. So um, it's important uh, before you exercise, you have a, a certain openness that he- that helps the, the, the muscles, joints and ligaments. What is that? And the other you, you're thing talking, that, could I just, uh, just uh, you know, uh, examine that a little? An openness. Is, is that to say mm. that you need to sort of stretch and um, extend a little more before exercise? Yeah, so you want to increase flexibility mm-hmm. in the joints that you have, in the movements that you want. You want to improve the control within that flexibility. So it's no use just getting flexible. You want to know that your muscles can handle that flexibility. So um, there's the, a, a typical example of this, David, would be a static stretch. Say, for example, you're stretching your hamstring. Um, you're about to go for a walk or a run outside, you want to warm up, you might do some static stretches. Static stretches are when you hold the muscle for, let's say, 30 seconds, and it's held in one place. But then you want to also add, I'm a big fan of of people doing dynamic stretches. Mm -hmm. So you're replicating the same movement, but the leg is moving through space. So it does a couple of things. One, the static nature of things just gets things open so there's that flexibility and then the dynamic nature of it starts getting the movement patterns right so you're doing that and the third thing that that it does the brain then says yes this person is now ready for exercise (laughs) and then there's a less chance of injury it makes sense it's 20 past eight david astor with you on abc evenings we are talking about how to keep how to keep smart warm and fit in these colder winter months uh, with Kusal Gudnawadna, who's the APA titled Sports and Exercise Physiotherapist. And if you've got a, a question or your own uh, survival strategy, your own thrival strategy as well, uh, by all means, call in 1300 222 774 and text in, as Angela has done, on 0437 774 774. Angela says, uh, the bundle podcast, a long munch while exercising outside, and Angela... Well, she doesn't deny the cold. She exercises in five layers. Scarf, gloves, hot soup, hot drinks, consistent habit and the consistency of uh, a habit as a consistency too. Now, all weather, all year round, I climatise, Angela. So that's when we are. It's a good point that Angela that, brings that's up. That's excellent. That's, yeah. yeah, that's really good, uh, David. The fact that Angela does that, uh, you know, creates something, creates a routine, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's very powerful. And when you create a routine you it's very hard to fall out of that routine if you're doing it regularly enough and if you are doing regularly enough then it becomes a better habit uh we have found that people end up giving up a routine anywhere between five to five to around seven days so if people can progress that up to 21 to 28 days wow you you've you're creating a wonderful habit Uh, are you better off to be um in overdressed and be hot as you're exercising or underdressed and exercise to be warm? You want to be comfortable. Now, if you can take layers off, uh, you're in a better position because obviously, um, you know, say you're going for a run but you don't have enough layers Mm -hmm. or say the rain starts, then you're you're going to have uh, other issues with, uh, say, severe cold. Um, whereas it's easier to take layers off and then, uh, you know, you might wrap your uh, jump around your waist, for example. So um, 
I think once again, it's a bit of common sense, but uh, if you can, um, uh, if you can be comfortable before you start and then potentially Makes take sense. layers off as you go, it, it's a lot easier. Uh, I find music really helps. I'll sort of hit the um, hit a certain um, downloading service uh, to get me out of bed, mm. and it's a it's on a um, it's on a shuffle. So I don't know what song is going to start my day, and that song is going to be the start of my exercise routine. I, I don't know if that's cheating, but it works for me. So things like music, things like those accountability journals. Uh, what are some other hacks mm. and hints that people could use, uh, Kusa? Um, if they keep um, something on the fridge, if mm -hmm. they keep like a schedule on the fridge, and all you need to do is mark an X on every day that you have exercise. So when you can physically see this and you can see physically see the, you know, the boxes marked off, um, it's very hard to, um, or when you don't have enough X's marked or ticks uh, yep. on, in the boxes, you, you start thinking, oh my goodness, I better, I better get up to it. So, um, you know, human beings are very visual creatures and having that uh, creates, once again, it creates that kind of habit. Weightlifting, the uh, same applies here or there's sort of other considerations for, for doing weight routines? So in um, the winter months, uh, we, you know, sometimes it is very hard to get, uh, get the momentum up. And we have found that if you, if you go and if you decrease the amount of sessions that you do for whatever reason, you know, it might be cold, you don't feel like doing it. Um, if you decrease the number of sessions, say you normally exercise three sessions a week mm -hmm. um, in the summer months and you drop it down to even once, uh, once a week, um, if you start keeping your intensity levels up, uh, you will still find the benefits or you don't actually lose um, what you've gained over those summer months. So the body is quite somewhat resilient and you're still helping the mind and the brain function as well. So um, one is to keep intensity levels up, but even in strength training, we have found, and the research shows this, that uh, you cut down, say, from three sessions a week down to one, um, you will still, uh, you won't see a huge decrease in strength for up to 12 weeks. So it gives a lot of people a lot of confidence that, you know, if you are struggling through those winter months and you don't really like to exercise that much, um, if you're doing something is better than nothing. And if you can keep the intensity levels up, even better. We were talking about wonderful uh, words in Indonesian. Um, a couple of here. One is that I'd love to share with you is uh, it's called uh, Asik, which is to be fully engrossed in something. Um, I think a little bit of Asik also helps if you have that routine and that continuity that Angela does. There's also, too, that beautiful mm. word, um, a Japanese concept, forest bathing. Uh, how does that play a role in, in the sort of winter exercise, Kusa? Yes. So forest bathing uh, came out of uh, the early 1980s, uh, David. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Japanese found, and it was a scientifically proven uh, you know, the results were scientifically proven that spending time around trees was actually good for you because trees emit this um, natural antibacterial oil um, and it helps, uh, you know, fight germs and, and insects. So uh, what they also found was this uh, doing, say, forest bathing, as they called it, uh, it helps reduce blood pressure, uh, reduces the stress hormones, uh, reduces depression, and um, it gives a boost of energy. And I think we naturally knew this, like spending time uh, in the environment, in uh, spending time uh, in amongst trees or, you know, natural things is actually good for you. And, you know, recently um, doctors in Scotland have now started prescribing uh, you know, walking in the forest uh, mm. as uh, part of their medication. And um, it's actually something that I do with all of my uh, clients and athletes as well. I do know if I have seen uh, something like the sweep of the Yarra or just even a big sort of arbour of trees, it does make a powerful difference to, to, to my wellbeing as much as a great you know, omen to begin a day. I also believe there's a calm, some kind of karma thing about it too and a calmness. Mm. It's been really great to chat with you, Kusal. Thank you so much for enlightening us about how to exercise in these darker months and colder months. Some really smart um, smart ideas there. Thanks, David. Been a pleasure. Likewise. Kusal Gudnawadna, he is the APA 
uh, sp titled Sports and Exercise Physiotherapist. I hope that's useful to you all and inspiring to you all. I like the idea of uh, finding a, an exercise colleague. That also helps the accountability, the apps and the music. So too, those stretches, really important. Uh, the visual prompt on the fridge is a good idea. Some great ideas too. And a little bit of nature is a powerful piece of juju. It's uh, 28 minutes past eight.